I am here with Conrad Thompson. Uh, where haven't you seen the guy? 83 weeks, something to wrestle with. What happens when... I- I'm, go- I'm just going to hit you with this right out of the gate, Conrad. Did you sprinkle the Conrad dust on Hulk Hogan and revive his career? <laughs> you know, it's funny. You're like the third person who's sort of joked about that. And no, absolutely not, man. He put that Hulk dust on all of us back in the 80s. And, you know, I'm happy for him. I know there's a lot of people who aren't happy about it, but I know it means a lot to him. And he's the reason I'm a wrestling fan. So that's probably not a popular thing to say today. And, you know, I hope, you know, everybody finds a way to be okay. And, and hopefully he does all the right things and... I'm just excited that a guy I looked up to a lot as a kid is finally back in the WWE. Well, I've not made it like a secret or anything. I really enjoy your your podcast particularly. I love I can I can tell the work that goes into something like that and one of the great things in pro wrestling is when you get to learn things and I always get to learn things on this show. Uh, what are some of the differences that you face between the three personalities in wrestling at least that you deal with? Well, you know, if you're talking about the different co-hosts, it's t- three totally different personalities for sure. You know, Eric Bischoff often takes a stance of whatever you think is wrong and whatever he think is right, he thinks is right. And if what you said is something he agrees with, he's usually going to find a way to disagree with some of it. I don't know how, but uh, he's probably the, one of the most arrogant people in the history of wrestling. But he, he gets a lot of that deservedly. I mean, the guy did a lot of innovation and a lot of creativity that – we still see influencing Monday Night Raw and SmackDown today. So he's probably the most challenging of the three. Bruce is there to just tell a good story. And sometimes Bruce won't let the truth get in the way of a good story, which annoys some people sometimes. And then Tony Schiavone is, is as he likes to say, hashtag NFLTG. He just doesn't care. And so he's going to let it rip. And it is a much more fun show with Tony Schiavone than the other two. Uh, Eric's you probably get an opportunity to learn more about the business side and Bruce is somewhere in between he's down to do a funny voice but also give you some real insight too you've also got Starcast going on uh tell me tell me the latest on Starcast because I mean it, the the guest list is too too long for me to even run down right now Man, it's crazy. You know, last week we announced the Golden Lovers were going to be there. So we've got Kota Ibushi and, of course, the IWGP Heavyweight Champion, Kenny Omega. And then over the weekend, we announced that Rey Mysterio was going to be there. And then last night, David Arquette, you know, of course, he returned to wrestling on Sunday night. Well, he's going to be there now. This morning, Busted Open decided they were going to come join us. And we're doing a free to the public, you know, breakfast with Busted Open. You can come see the guys do their thing. Uh, and that's going down Friday at StarCast. But now tonight at eight we've got something really cool it's the opportunity to pre-order starcast so if you would like to have done all of this but tickets sold out and maybe you would have loved to have been it all in but tickets sold out or it was just really inconvenient to try to travel all the way to chicago here's the second chance you've been looking for you can get the starcast platinum weekend pass so you get every event we're talking over 20 events we're talking over 40 hours over 100 superstars and we're even giving you a 20 dollar fight credit But my favorite, you know, I'm a wrestling memorabilia collector. We talk about that on all the shows. I was able to secure the all-in ring canvas, and that's obviously going to be one of the most historic nights in wrestling history and maybe the second biggest night this year besides WrestleMania. And we're going to have that ring canvas, and we'll be able to offer it for a limited time, of course, because rings are only so big. Uh, But we're putting that on sale tonight at 8 o'clock. So it's a $345 value for just $149. You'll get a live stream of both shows. When I say both shows, I mean most of the time. We've got two shows going on at the same time on two separate stages. But then you can watch it later, too, video on demand. So even if you're at, in the, the building for StarCast in Chicago, you're going to have to choose. Do I want to be in this crowd or that crowd? At home, though, you can just switch back and forth or watch them both later. It's all happening tonight at fight.tv forward slash StarCast. Man, it's a loaded show. I think it's it's great that it, StarCast is going to appear on Fight as well. I spoke to Jeff Jarrett last week. He's got stuff going on in Fight. I'm even familiar with him. I've called some MMA on Fight there. They dip their toes into an awful lot of a lot of stuff. Uh, how did that deal come about? You know, it's funny because everybody was asking, are we going to broadcast it? When I first announced that we were doing StarCast, I didn't think we would have as much buy-in as we did. And eventually it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And so... You know, a one-day idea turned into two days, turned into three days. Now we're at four days, and 
I thought, well, we'll run five hours a day. And now there's a couple of days where it feels like we never close. So it just continues to get bigger every time I turn around and um, fight approached me and said, Hey, what if, and I, I've never done that before. So I'm not even really sure how that worked, but they put together something that I thought, Hey, this could make sense. You know, we've got a lot of people over in Europe, for instance, who just can't make the trip over. It's just not financially possible for them to, you know, sh- Shrek over from, from Europe somewhere. So what we've got is an opportunity to watch them all on demand or live or both. And I thought, man, let's put a little sprinkle on top. The all-in ring canvas, you know, where Kenny Omega and Rey Mysterio and Cody Rhodes himself is going to be challenging for the NWA world title. There's just going to be a lot of history on that mat, and I think it's a pretty cool deal that we're going to be able to put together. And some really unique events. You know, I think the sleeper event that not enough people are talking about is Jim Johnston. You know, almost everyone listening to this grew up on that guy's music, and he influenced the way we felt about wrestling in such a big way. But he's always sort of been in the shadows. He's almost like the Wizard of Oz of wrestling. Like, we know the name, but we never really see him or hear from him. And he's going to be making a very rare, maybe the first personal appearance, uh, especially the first post-WWE. And he's going to bring some musical instruments along and sort of get us into the creative process of how he created some of those themes that we've all grown up with. I thought when you said sleeper uh, event, you were going to say J.J. Dillon because he will literally put you to sleep. Well, you know, I, I, I think about that, too, when I'm putting together the show panel. So I'm like, OK, if I've got Animal out there with shoulder pads and face paint and I've got Tully Blanchard and I've got Lex Luger, uh, maybe we'll be able to somehow fight it off. But I did talk to Rich McKinney, who works on the J.J. Dillon show, and I said, hey, what if we had some J.J. Dillon merch? And he said, if you're thinking what I'm thinking, we need nightcaps and pillows. So he's in on it. <laughs> Do you think Brutus the Beef, Barber Beefcake missed an opportunity? He would have never had to have put anybody in a sleeper hold if he would have just dragged J.J. Dillon out of the office. And You know, it's so funny that you mentioned him specifically because we just covered him on Something to Wrestle. Great episode. Sold him a ton of books. Thank you, sir. And, and he's even – he himself is coming to StarCast. I mean, you never know who's going to be added next. But, yeah, even Brutus the F and Barber Beefcake is going to be at StarCast. I learned a lot about – especially the accident – on that show, because when I started to watch wrestling, it was right towards the tail end of his in-ring run in like 90 or so. So when he came, I had no idea why he was gone or anything like that as a kid. And you would always hear parasailing accident, parasailing accident. I thought Bruce did a great job bringing some gravity to the situation about how bad it really was. And even uh, how real it was, even after, because he was kind of out of sight, out of mind. And when you don't see somebody in that condition every day, you kind of... They, they are out of sight, out of mind. I would highly recommend that that episode. It was it was very good. I, I have another question for you in regards to the WWE version of your show. Some changes obviously had to be made. How, do, how does the conversation go when they're like, okay, I know you start off your podcast one way, but we want you to start it off this way, notably uh, you know how you do begin the podcast with Bruce doing the intro as opposed to you? Well, I think what we were looking for there is a way to sort of set the tone. And so the original idea was, let's have Bruce start with one of the heads on a stick. That wasn't a WWE directive. It was a way to sort of loosen the audience up because I think it did introduce us to a whole new group of wrestling fans who maybe hadn't discovered our podcast. I can't believe that there may have been wrestling fans who hadn't, but maybe they hadn't. And I thought, what better way to do that than to have Bruce open up with one of his silly impressions? So... That was sort of uh, the original idea, and then just go ahead and use it as a way to introduce who everyone is. And, of course, the name of the show is Something to Wrestle with Bruce Pritchard. So on the network, Something Else to Wrestle with Bruce Pritchard. And then you can introduce me later. You know, I'm not the star of the show. It's clearly Bruce and his stories. And if we can highlight one of the more fun parts of that with with his caricatures, because that's what he prefers to call it instead of an impression, then I think it's a winning combination. And clearly WWE likes it. I mean, we aired our last episode this past Wednesday, and they were still running commercials for us on the pay-per-view. So they liked something, for sure. So they, they still advertised the show last night, even though you had mentioned that the season was ending. Uh, how are discussions going, or have you had discussions about a second season? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they would love to do another season. Well, the, the show did really, really well. You know, when you look at stuff that's aired this year, we had several episodes that were in their top ten most watched for the year so far. And many times, you know, we were consistently in their top 10 
sometimes with two and on one occasion even three episodes in the top 10 for the most watched for the week. But what's interesting about our podcast is unlike a lot of content WWE is creating now, it's, and I hate the term, but it's evergreen, so it doesn't get old. In a weird way, if we are talking about, you know, the pay-per-view last night, Extreme Rules, that's only cool for like a week, tops, and then nobody cares. But if we go back and we talk about something from 1988, oddly, that never gets old. So it's an interesting dynamic, but it is something that uh, WWE thinks will have more legs and will have, as they like to call, a longer tail. Uh, so I think people will continue to discover the show. I still get tweets every day about episode one and episode two, and those were months ago. Yeah. So I can't imagine that that would slow down over the course of the next year. And as we wrap up, you I saw you mention, and I spoke to him last week, Jeff Jarrett. You and Bruce both have told me individually, if a guy needs a podcast, it's Jeff Jarrett. He's doing a one-man show. I think if, if you're doing a one-man show, why not do a podcast? You going to get that going? <laughs> It can't be that far away. You know, if I were to do another show, it would have to be after a wedding and after a convention and after the WWE Network show was done. I'd have to have a lot of afters. But, yeah, I would love to do a show with Jeff Jarrett. I think Jeff uh, is is arguably the most interesting person in wrestling right now just based on his history. Nobody's got the story that he's got and, you know, walking out on the company. And, you know, there's just so many little nuances to his story that nobody else has. So, I'd love to do something with him, for sure. I will literally invent a dick pill to sponsor that show. Well, that's what we're in the mood for, you know. And don't forget to use Blue Chew. Go on over to BlueChew.com and use our promo code 83 weeks to give your gimmick the hot tag. So if you're uh, if you're looking for somebody to tag in, don't look for Ricky Morton. Look for Blue Chew at BlueChew.com. What else you got going on, Conrad? Man, I, I tell you, I'm looking for another thing to do. I don't have enough to do right now. You know, between mortgages and a wedding and a convention. And yeah, this stuff isn't three even your day job. A TV show. That's no, I'm talking to you from my mortgage company right now. And, you know, I've been here since early this morning and I'll be here till late at night. And a lot of people ask, how do you manage to do all this? The weekends? You know, everybody else goes and does something fun. Yesterday, I woke up at 4.30 in the morning. I was at the airport by 5.05. Uh, I had departed Huntsville by 6 o'clock on my way to Atlanta and then on my way to Pittsburgh. Uh, I had lunch with uh, Bruce at our venue for our live show. We did our live show with Mr. Jerry McDivitt, who was uh, one hell of a guest for us for a live show. And then I was immediately straight to the airport and back home uh, and in my bed by, by 11.45 last night. So that's how you get it done. You make four flights in a day and you sleep on the plane. That's how you do it. Can you put in a good word for me with McDevitt? He's not happy with me right now. Man, I tell you, I don't know that he's happy with me after yesterday. <laughs> I was I was trying to cross-examine a little bit on my own, but, you know, I know who to who to push and who not to. I think I'll just stick to Bischoff and Tony and Bruce after that. I would have paid for the McDevitt versus Raven deposition on pay-per-view. You know, that's one of the things that I wanted to get to, but we only had an hour with him. You know, the format of our show is usually we do – about an hour just with our fun stuff we can't tell on the podcast and then some stories about whatever's local and then the second half of the, of the show we usually try to have a guest and i knew this was a big one so instead of trying to say ah oh, we can do him for 20 minutes or 30 minutes let's do a whole hour with him there still wasn't enough time but he sold he told some tremendous vince mcmahon stories about you know different depositions and stuff and had a phenomenal story about nails and so many more <laughs> But we never got around to Raven. Uh, I feel like you could probably do, you know, 10-hour 10, 10 episodes with him. People think Bruce and I go long three- and four-hour shows. This is a guy who knows where all the bodies are buried. And it's yes. up to him what he wants to reveal for sure. Conrad, thank you so much. Hey, man, I appreciate you letting me come on and talk about StarCast. You know, I hope if you're a wrestling collector that you're as interested in a piece of this all-in ring canvas as I am. And hopefully you dig some of the shows that we're doing. You know, some of the shoot interview companies are selling these experiences for $15 a pop. Well, I've got more than 20 of them for $149 plus a $20 credit plus the all-in ring canvas. I think it's a hell of an offer. And you can see more about it. And even a pretty cool video Sean Mooney did for us that we called the StarCast Event Center. It's just like the old event centers he used to do back in the day for Vince McMahon. All that right now is available for you to check out at fight.tv forward slash StarCast.